Welcome everyone to another edition of the Pastor's Talk. My name is Pastor Robert Cole and it's my pleasure to bring these Bible studies into your home. Today I want to speak with you about overcoming fear with faith. You know, so much of what is happening in the world today is creating worry and fear. However, I want to use God's word to help us overcome the world's fear by using faith in Christ. In today's Bible study, I want to speak on the topic from fear to faith. Using Luke chapter 8 verses 40 to 55, I hope to learn from Jairus' example as he deals with his dying daughter. I intend to focus on understanding just how this fair, fearful man overcame his fear to muster up enough faith to follow Jesus and have his daughter saved. In this time of the pandemic, there is so much we can learn from Jairus' example, especially since we are forced to overcome our own fears by allowing faith in God to direct our everyday life. You know, for the sake of time, I would ask you to pause the video here and read from Luke chapter 8, verses 40 to 55. Please pause. Thank you. Please feel free to keep your Bible open as I share what God has put on my heart. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's continue. How anxious and fearful Jairus must have been after learning that his only child was so sick that she was on her deathbed. His position as the man in charge of the Jewish meeting place tells us that he was a man of status in the community, most likely someone who could have yielded enough influence to have his daughter medically cared for. However, the fact that his daughter was on her deathbed revealed that this sickness was beyond his control. A fact that would heighten his level of fear. I want you to take a moment to think about your responses when you found yourself facing a situation that is beyond your control or was beyond your control. What was your response? Now, uh, when I ask a question, I would like you to write the question down so that at the end of the study, you can take time to answer it. You know, this is a Bible study, although it may seem like a sermon. It is a Bible study. Let's continue. Facing the unknown regarding whether his daughter would live or die and asking the question if she could live, who could save her, continued to raise the level of fear in Jairus' heart. Is there any wonder that the unknown is one of Satan's tools. Then, having learned on two occasions that his daughter had died, served to continue attacking any hope he had left that his daughter was going to live. You know, I hope that these examples help us to see the pattern that Satan uses to attack our hope and faith with everyday worldly situations. Fear has a tendency to rob us of our faith in God's power to heal and save from the consequences of sin, which is death. No wonder fear is one of the primary tools of Satan. But today, we're not here to talk about Satan and his tricks because today we came to focus on moving from fear to faith so we can obtain the victory that we have in Jesus mighty name somebody say hallelujah today I want us to focus on three lessons three points that I believe can help us learn how to move from fear to faith from today's story we first learned that Jairus allowed his fear to lead him to faith you know, many times fear drives us away from God as we either become paralyzed in our fear or we tend to go back seeking after those things in our past that 
we have been delivered from just because they're familiar to us. But fear is not always negative. There are times when our fear drives us to God as desperate times result in us taking desperate measures. We have seen and experienced numerous times when frightening situations result in us calling on the name of Jesus, hoping for divine intervention to pull us through. Well, in our study today, we see Jairus, who is desperate for help with his dying daughter, overcome his pride and any concern he had about the judgmental feedback he might get from other religious leaders. Remember, the Jewish leaders did not want their members to believe in Christ. He did this to publicly humble himself before the large crowd to kneel down and call on Jesus, begging him to heal his ailing daughter. Now, now give me a moment. Let me, let me take a slight turn here to talk about how Jairus, Jairus got such faith. In event, you were wondering where Jairus got the faith he needed to go to Jesus and beg him for healing for his daughter. It was from the spreading of the good news about Jesus Christ as the stories of his miracles were spread throughout the land. We should always remember, faith comes from hearing God's word, also known as the good news testimony of what God has done in your life being spread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's look at lesson two from today's text. It shows that Jesus provided Jairus with real life testimony, turning his fear into faith. One might believe that Jairus' tendency would be to become frustrated with Jesus when Jesus took time to respond to the woman with the issue of blood. Perhaps you might have wondered why Jesus would stop at such a critical point in his journey to heal Jairus' daughter, especially after learning that during his interaction with the woman, Jairus' daughter died. However, taking a closer look at Jesus' interaction with the woman, we learn that Jesus never wastes time. Everything that he does has a purpose and a message. So let's take a closer look at this moment in today's text. From this interaction, we can learn that the woman had an issue of blood for 12 years and Jairus' daughter was 12 years old. We also learn no one could help the woman no matter how many doctors she visited, just as no one could help Jairus' daughter regardless of his status. Finally, we learn that the power of the Holy Spirit that Jesus felt leave his body and heal the woman is the same healing power that Jesus would use to bring the little girl lying dead on the bed back to life. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, this is no coincidence. Jesus is preparing Jairus not only to hear, but to also believe and follow Jesus' instructions to not fear, but to have faith that his daughter will be well. Hallelujah. Notice, Jesus informs the woman that her faith healed her, showing Jairus that it is faith that heals. Then, Right after making that statement to the woman, he instructs Jairus not to worry. Not to worry about the reports he just received from the people from his town, but believe in the report of the Lord. And what did that report say? Your daughter will live. Amen. Hallelujah. So let me, here's a second question uh, from today's Bible study. Whose report will you believe? Amen. Now, my third and final lesson I want us to I want to highlight shows us that 
Jesus speaks faith to Jairus, believing in the power of God's spirit before the daughter is raised from the dead. Once again, we see that faith comes before God acts. This is the lesson that Jairus wants, uh, that Jesus rather wants Jairus to learn. So he will not be distracted by the crowd of mourners and naysayers. You know, during difficult times, it is so easy for us to become distracted that our focus moves off our faith in God's word and power. Today, we can easily become distracted by the many news shows that focus on the coronavirus, the economy, the brutality of the police, and the presidential election. That's, we do it so that we forget what God's word says. Now, I'm not saying that we should not be aware of the news of the day, but what I am saying is that Christians, we believe, as Christians, we believe the report of the Lord. Another Bible study question for you today is, what is the best use of your time? Should you spend more time focusing on the world's report or on God's report? Now, I want you to notice what Jesus does with those at the house who do not exhibit faith in his power. Notice he keeps them out of the room where he is going to call on God's power to save. I want us to learn from this example by stop allowing doubters to stay in your presence with their loud negative voices. You need to get away from such people even if they are your loved ones, so that you can hear the voice of God, which will increase your faith, bringing on the power of the Holy Spirit to heal. The mourners were crying, and when Christ stated that the girl was not dead, the people laughed at him. These are not the people we should want in our presence as they continue to attempt to chip away at our faith with their doubt. I'm not saying you have to get rid of them forever, but what I am saying is you need to create distance so you can hear from God by the power of his Holy Spirit. Then they will get to see God's power working through you and learn from your testimony. Notice that in the midst of the crowd of unfaithful people, Jesus speaks faith. The child is not dead. He speaks the faith to Jairus and the other believers, showing us another way to drown out the voices of doubt and fear. Do not allow the world to have the only say. As Christians, we, are, we not only have a voice, but just as importantly, we have something to say. So prophesy. Remember what God has revealed to us in the previous pastor's talks and worship services over the past six weeks? He continued to remind us that faith comes before God acts. God has instructed us to prophesy to the dry bones so they may live. God has instructed us to speak to the mountain without doubt so that it will be removed. God has called us to walk by faith and not by sight. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage us to make time to go back and revisit the pastor's talks, number two to six, to connect with the teaching of our Lord to make us stronger in our faith. And if you have time, review the sermons. I believe that God is giving us clear messages about faith in a time we desperately need it. In addition to observing Jesus speak, we learn that Christ believed in the power of God to raise the girl from the dead. Jesus puts action behind his word of faith. When Christ puts his hand out to touch the girl, he expects that God, who gave him the Holy Spirit, will use that spirit to return life 
to the girl that was dead. Once again, revealing that faith believes before God acts. To prove that the girl was not just spiritually alive, Christ has the parents feed her, showing that she is also physically alive, thus proving to Jairus that with Christ it is impossible to overcome our fear by faith in the promises of God. Now, the next time you are faced with a fearful situation in your life, what will you do to deal with it? The following, I, I, I want to take some uh, look at some takeaways from today's lesson takeaway number one God has called us to check our pride and reputation at the door so we can humbly come before Jesus and call on his name takeaway number two we are overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony so take time to practice your testimony no matter how big or small you think it is there is power in your testimony in the power of our lord jesus christ speak believe and receive that's the third takeaway do not fear speaking faith if god promised it in his word it is yours to boldly proclaim your belief is manifested by your actions. Your actions should line up with God's word, testifying that we trust God's promise. So when we speak without doubt, God will give us everything in his word that he has promised to give. Praise God. Praise God. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to stay connected with God, not only during this time of the pandemic and the economic crisis, but even as we come out of this, as God delivers us out of this, I want you to stay close to God. I want you to allow God to, to uh, broaden your testimony. I want you to allow God to do miracles in your life, miracles that will bring glory to his name. You know, our times of prayer, our times of testimony, our times of praise are not just designed to glorify us, but to teach others about the true nature and glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So continue, continue, and may God bless you, and may God keep you. I truly pray that you enjoyed this Bible study. Uh, I truly pray that you got and gleaned so much from it. Don't be afraid to go back and look at, look at it over and over. Look at the other pastor's talks over and over and just continue to ask God to show you his plan for you, for our church, for your community, and for this world. Dream big, saints, dream big, and let God move in your life. May God move us all from fear to faith so that we may become mighty warriors in his name. God bless you and God keep you. May God make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you. I love you. And, my, and may Christ continue to walk with you in a mighty way. Amen.